Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this uh, latest A-Level Sociology Revision Blast. This one is on families and households. My name's Jim, I'm here at Tutor New Headquarters. Let's take us over to the Sociology Team Live Lounge to see who's there to run today's session. It's Duncan and Craig, that's a relief. We were expecting Hello. you gents. Hi. Duncan, um, again, if I could ask you to maybe just introduce the session, explain how it works. And then when you're ready, uh, give me the nod and we'll make a start on the activities for this session. Of course. OK, so we've got a number of activities coming up over the next uh, 25 to 30 minutes, um, starting with some multiple choice questions, then a number of other activities. You've got your chat window there. Some of you have been 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 here, done that, been to some of the other um, live streams already. But what we'd like is when we ask a question, if you could type in an answer so it might just be a b c or d certainly for the first section with them um mcqs it will be um and then we'll keep going and see how we do so if you've got any questions post them into the box as well um and we'll hopefully spot them let's see how we do okay so here we go some mcqs so first of all which type of family would you associate with step families is it a nuclear b extended c single parent or d reconstituted um which ones would you associate with that lots of people saying hello in the uh, chat there hi uh hi kate <laughs> hello. um great stuff okay some some answers coming through what do you think a b c or d oh lots of d's all came in at a rush shall we see if you're right Course. yeah well done well done with that one let's see the next let's see the next question okay who concluded that children in the past were like little adults is that Dobash, postman edgel or aries seeing a few answers coming through Still a few from the previous question okay so what do you think, A, B, C or D? Seeing some Ds coming through. A couple of people hedging their bets a bit. They are having a, a good day, thank you, Luke. Um, shall we see what the what the answer is? It is Aries, well done. I think the vast majority of people got that one. Philippe Aries looked at uh, paintings and portraits from sort of medieval period and saw that the children were dressed similarly and behaving similarly to the adults, whether that's actually a very... A uh, valid way of determining what childhood was like at the time, we can debate. Okay, the next one. Which sociologist discusses the idea of the disappearance of childhood? What do we think? A, B, C or D? Let's see your answers now. What do you reckon? Give you a moment to have some suggestions. Oh, lots of bees, lots and lots of bees. Shall we have a look? It was indeed B, Neil Postman. Well done. Um, let's move to our next one. Okay, which role would you associate with the breadwinner? So which of the roles in the household would you associate with the breadwinner? Is it the instrumental role, the expressive role? Is it an authoritarian role or an egalitarian role? So what do we think? few answers coming through let's wait and see a couple more can you remember your um talcott parsons old in the family i'm seeing a couple of right answers coming through now oh lots now yeah well done so what's the answer it is it is a the instrumental role isn't it well done uh, a couple of people going for b's the expressive role that was uh, obviously the more nurturing caring role that parsons associated with uh the mother or the woman in the in the family okay the next one what term is used to describe being married illegally to two people specifically two people at the same time is it polygamy bigamy monogamy or polyandry any ideas there What 
What do we think? Being married illegally to two people at the same time. A few answers coming through. Yeah, a few correct answers coming through there. I'm going to talk about specifically two. It's, uh, yeah, bigamy. Well done, those of you who went for B. Um, a, polygamy means being married to multiple people, not necessarily two. It could be more than two. Um, and in some societies, <laughs> that might not be illegal. It might be acceptable. Okay, um, next one. What term did Palmer use to describe the damaged childhood of present times? What term did she use? Was it hegemonic childhood, toxic childhood, fragmented childhood, or broken childhood? What do we think? Give you a moment or two to come up with a few suggestions. I think it's one you'll you'll have come across. What did she mean by it as well? Yeah, quite a few right answers coming through now. So let's have a look. It was, yep, B, toxic childhood. And she was talking about people spending a lot of time on screens, whatever. That's all everyone does now. It's all that's every, everyone's childhood. That's going to school, isn't it, being on a screen? Uh, but anyway, that was, uh, you know, obviously, she was referring more to her. Uh, to it being a, a problem without the sort of adult interaction. Okay, the next question. And this is the last of the MCQs before I hand over to Craig for some different types of um, activities. This is obviously um, a quote that absolutely everyone remembers and uses it in all their essays, whether it's relevant or not. Um, which sociologist said that women's, women are, and you can read the, uh, the question yourself, was it Sharp, Ansley, Oakley or Stanworth? type in A, B, C, or D. If Don't type in the, the quote itself because it will fall foul of uh, YouTube's um, censorship. Okay, um, what do we reckon? A, B, C, or D, who said it? The women were that. Lots of answers coming through. Of course, then it's a classic. Um, mostly, mostly correct answers. It was Fran Ansley, well done. If you got that one, she's a Marxist feminist. Um, and it's, 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 it is a useful quote. It's quite a good one to use if you're talking about um, as, as a kind of perspective, uh, as a sort of evaluation of the warm bath theory in Talcott Parsons. It's like this idea that, you know, the man comes home and the family eases his stress and everything. But Ansley says, well, you know, the woman takes that on, you know, takes on that stress and all the problems, whatever. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to hand over to Craig now for a different activity. We're going to look at a 60 second challenge. Okay. Okay, just quickly, Eskimo Max, happy birthday. <laughs> it says Duncan and Craig is my birthday today. Can I get a happy birthday? I, I'm starting to feel of like a radio DJ here. Right, okay, so we've got a 60 second challenge now um, on the back of Duncan's controversial multiple choice questions. Um, what we have to do in a 60 second challenge is I'm gonna, um, you have, a, eight pairs of responses there. On the left-hand side, you have a description of a study or a key term from a piece of research. And on the right-hand side, you have um, a sociological researcher. You have to match those up. Um, when we go into the next slide, sort of like the clock will start ticking uh, and you'll have 60 seconds to match those up. If you just put in the pairs in the uh, text box, in the chat box, um, and then we'll uh, go through the answers at the end. Okay, so if we could start the clock, please. Lots of people saying um, happy birthday to Eskimo Max now. Yeah. Very good. Okay, are we getting any matches? What do you think? You've got to link them up A to 1, B to, or whatever, not A to 1, because that would be wrong. Mm -hmm. But what, you know, but a, you know, what, a letter with a number. Go on, how are you doing? Oh, I've seen. So we've got A5, so five, five types of diversity, the rapper pause, okay. 1F, let me just see, Chester, new conventional family. Very good. B8, confluent love and giddens. A5, D6, okay, let's just see D6, dual burden is Oakley. A5, A5, 2E, confluent, uh, sorry, E, 2E, was it? Confluent yeah, Duncan and Marsden and triple shift, triple shift, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
to it to me is good well done yeah it's kind of like playing battleships here, sort of like trying to figure out the A and the five. And the, <laughs> um, okay. Oh, right. Sorry, we're full out of time. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> if we look at some of the correct responses, I was so um, worked up with sort of like the, the text responses there. Okay. So the five types of family diversity, it was the wrapper pause. Uh, extra credit if anybody can name the five different types of diversity in the box. Uh, confluent love was the idea of Anthony Giddens. The divorce extended family, that was Stacy. The dual burden, of course, is um, Anne Oakley. Uh, the triple shift was Duncan and Marsden. The neo-conventional family was Chester. Uh, lagged adaptation was Jonathan Gershony. And age patriarchy was Gittens. Okay, so if we move on to our next activity, and in our next activity, what we have to do is you have to categorize um, these eight phrases, or sorry, these eight statements that are here. And um, they will be Marxist statements, functionist statements, or feminist statements. And again, it's another one that's against the clock. What you need to do is you need to take that statement and think, is it a Marxist statement? Is it a functionist statement? Or is it a feminist statement? And these are all around the functions of the family. So if we could start the clock again, please. Off we go. So the side, functionalists, which statements are functionalist, which statements are Marxist, which statements are feminist? Maybe just put functionalist and the numbers next to it, Marxist and the numbers next to it, feminist and the numbers next to it. So we go through the statements, generates false needs, which group would suggest that? Women have a dual burden, which group? The family provides economic support, which group? Which group uh, would suggest that sort of like um, the, the family, sorry, police in the family? Who suggested stabilization of adult personalities? Okay, we're getting some through now. Functionalist five and six, yep. Feminist eight and two, mm hmm. Functionalist three, five, six, and seven, mm hmm. Seven. I look at seven again. Okay. So generates false needs. Which type of statement do you think that would come up as? So we've got Marxist three provides economic support. Okay. Uh, functionist four, five, and six. Feminism two and eight. Functionist four. Functionist seven. Okay. Functionist six and five. Let's look at them. Yep. The functionist uh, statements were three, five, and six. Primary socialization obviously was one of Parsons and Murdoch's ideas that the main role of the family was to socialize children into the norms and values of society or into a value consensus. Stabilization of adult personalities, that was Parsons, one of Parsons' two key functions of the family, um, suggesting that the family acts almost like um, um, a soothing warm bath, if you like. And it provides economic support. That was one of Murdoch's um, functions of the family. The safe haven was actually Zaretsky, who was a Marxist, who suggested that the home provided uh, a safe haven from the alienating effects of work. Uh, Marxists also would suggest that the family helps generate false needs. You may have heard of this as things like pester power. And then you have Don Zalot, who is a Marxist, who talked about policing the family, how the state um, uses policy to police the family. And our feminists obviously reinforcing gender stereotypes and that women have a dual burden. OK, and of course, we know that that is Anne Oakley. So well done to those who got some of them. So like feminist two and eight, they were the easiest ones to spot. Some people got confused between safe haven and stabilization of adult personalities. One thing to say about that is they are essentially um, very, very similar. Um, however, one says that it is for the benefit of capitalism. The other says it is the benefit for the members of the family. OK, so um, what do we mean by generating false needs? OK, um, false needs is the idea that sort of like the family makes you purchase things that you don't actually need. OK, so now we're going to move on to our 30 second challenge. We've had a 60 second challenge. Uh, we're now going to move on to three 30 second challenges. Um, you need to be able to identify as many reasons as you can for the decline in the birth rate. So as many reasons as you can for the decline in the birth rate in 30 seconds, if you just write them down in the chat box. Um, and if we could start the clock now.
what do we think? All right, some coming through. Contraception, yeah, there could be one. Contraception. Legislation, women's in focus on careers, family planning, changing in the women's roles, contraception again, um, feminism, increased independence, changing position of women. Whoa, they're all coming through at once now. Children are a financial burden. Um, yes, you are able to come back and rewatch these. Um, women's changing position in society, children are long, no longer economic assets. Okay, if we yeah. can look at the answers and see some of these. Really good. Some really good answers we've got there. So one of the reasons for the decline in the birth rate is delay in childbearing, which then links in to a decrease in the fertility window for women. Women's career aspirations means people are having children later in life, which means they have less of them. And um, the average number of children, I think, is dropped to 1.7, uh, roughly. Um, changing attitudes to relationships. People are less likely to be in long-term relationships, maybe more in serial monogamy, and therefore less likely, to, sorry, less likely to have more children. Um, let's see some of the other ones that were coming through. Contraception is one that I didn't put in there, but is very much a reason that you get credited for. Um, secularization, that's a good one. Secularization, yeah. Children as an economic burden, I think we've had quite a few times, and the rise of feminism, post modernity and individ individualization. <laughs> Sorry, I can't even say that. Individualization, <laughs> yes, would be one. People choosing not to have children. Um, IVF would probably be a reason why, um, for um, why we may have an increase in the birth rate rather than a decline. Um, any others coming through? As, um, no? Okay. Seen a, seen a few, but yeah. Easier to get divorced, possibly. Changing yeah. role of women in society, that tends to be the big one. Okay, let's move yeah. on to our next question. Um, let's identify as many reasons as you can for the long-term decline in marriages. Now, some of these may be familiar. Um, again, we've highlighted about five or six reasons, but I want to give you uh, I want to give you an opportunity to sort of you for you to give me some responses there in the text box. Um, if we start the clock now, please. More education and career opportunities, good. See, marriage is a choice, not a necessity. Increased same-sex marriage, cohabitation, yep. Secularization, good. Individualization again, I can say that this time. Um, secularization is the idea that we're moving away from the ideas of the church and we are now decided we our morality is guided by our individual principles rather than the church now uh, changing attitudes to cohabitation less stigma around marriage uh, divorce feminism only in division four um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that sort of <laughs> <that's doing laughs> legal changes emphasis on careers expectations of marriage, changing roles, more employment opportunities for women. Yeah, there's lots of really good responses in there. Can we just have a look at the, our answers? Yeah, we have changing attitudes to relationships, serial monogamy. Uh, so people moving from one long-term relationship to another rather than having one lifelong relationship. Uh, the concept of confluent love where people choose a relationship um, not based on their uh, sorry not based on their needs because they can fulfill their own needs but they base it's more based upon um intimacy the expense of marriage people are delaying getting married because it is more expensive secularization we've mentioned career aspirations reduced stigma of marriage getting married is expensive there's some like, quite a lot of good ones coming through life expectancy is a good one as well obviously people are getting married later in life um, because they're living longer um non-financial independence as well Okay, let's look at our next one. And our final one, identify as many reasons as you can for the rise of reconstituted families. So these are reconstituted families is where two partners obviously get together um, and have had children in previous relationships. So if we could start the clock now, please. Giddens, Giddens we've talked about confluent love. Okay, secularization as well, yeah. Rise in divorce would be a very good reason for this, as reconstituted families. Individualization again. 
rising divorce, everything's coming through all at once here. Um, rising divorce, lots of people have got rising divorce, less stigma of divorce, cheaper to get divorced. We could talk about legislation of divorce as well. Rising divorce rates, less stigma attached to divorce. Lots of people have gone down that divorce route. Can we have a look at the answers, please? So there you go, increase in divorce was the first one. Serial monogamy as well. People are more likely to move relationships when they're unhappy and move to from one relationship to another rather than stay in a lifelong relationship. Changing attitudes to relationships, people are less likely um, to stay in relationships that are dysfunctional in contemporary society. Increased life expectancy means that some people may um, leave their marriage rather than staying with somebody because they're going to live longer. And increased individualism, this is the idea of choice. People having more choice over what, uh, sorry, over their relationships, and therefore choosing to leave partners on and choosing to meet partners, uh, new partners. Uh, also, people have the idea of finding one, the one. So instead of being married, they can cohabit before they move into another relationship. Okay, it's a good response. Yep. And people put more value on marriage, hence why divorce rate increased and led to reconstituted families. Okay, so some good responses there. I will pass you over to Duncan for our final uh, activity today. Thanks, Duncan. Okay, thanks very much, Craig. Some really good answers there. I was really impressed reading through lots of responses there. Really impressive. Um, and so in the same spirit, when we do this activity, what I'd quite like is as well as just going with the higher or lower, which is the sort of key, key part of the activity, I'd like you to come up with some suggestions for why that might be. I want you to apply your sociological uh, knowledge to... Um, to come up with some suggestions for why it might be higher or lower as well as just whether it is um yes this will be on the channel as a recording pretty much straight after we finish we'll be this is the last activity amy so we'll be finishing uh, in a few minutes okay so first of all we've got lone parent families in the uk and we'll come up with in a moment a little number saying the percentage of lone parent families in the uk so the percentage of households in the uk that our lone parent families is 14.9%. So what we now need to know is what the next category is. Lone person households in Scotland. Do you think the percentage of lone person households in Scotland is higher or lower than 14.9%? So you might want to think about why there would be lone person households, what sort of groups live in lone person households, whether you'd expect it to be higher or lower than that 14.9%, what do we think? Let's see if we've got any suggestions, higher or lower, and why. We've got highers and lowers, higher, lower, higher. Um, okay, got a mixed bag. Okay, shall we have a look at this one and then we can, we can discuss it more as we, we, we sort of come through. It's quite a bit higher, 35%. Okay, so why do we think there might be quite such a high proportion of households in Scotland are lone person households? Like nearly a third of households in Scotland are people living on their own. Amelia there says because of the elderly. Okay. Um, and that's, that's a good response there, population yeah. density. Okay, yeah, that's an interesting thought to think about, isn't it? Um, higher because of an increase in individualization, higher because of increased life expectancy in the aging population. Really good. So some really good suggestions there for why it might be at that level. Shall we have a look at the next um, category and see what we think? It's going to be closely related. Lone person households in London. Okay, so if we think that the lone person households in Scotland is you know quite high 35 percent um Esk eskimo max i think that's a little bit harsh on on scotland it's there's some lovely bits of scotland um <laughs> do we think uh lone person households in london will be higher or lower than lone person households in scotland some still some excellent responses coming through here about women's financial independence singletons have increased um increasing number of elderly people people choosing to prioritize their career got People saying higher, higher, lower because rent's expensive. Okay, lower as it's more expensive. People live together more. Lower because of the price, sharing places. Lower because it's expensive. Lots of good suggestions there. Also, I suppose one thing to think about is a lot of people are saying the reason why it might have been higher in Scotland was because of the um, aging population. What's the, is the age profile of London higher or lower than Scotland? Someone else, I think Hannah there has put lower as there are fewer 
elderly people lower because people migrate to London in order to work. Although I suppose some of the people migrating might be single, but would they live on their own or perhaps in flat shares and things like that because of the expensive point that people have made? Shall we have a look? Yeah, it is lower, quite a bit lower. OK, um, London, it, if you take the UK as a whole, the region with the lowest proportion of lone person households is London and the highest is Scotland. So that's that's uh, quite interesting. And for the reasons that you've given, um, and there are lots of good things. People said about it being a really big population. Of course, that doesn't affect the percentage, um, the proportion. So there might well be more lone person households, but as a proportion of households, it's lower. OK. And someone's put the same. You don't get anything for a pair, not in this game. OK, that's my one um, <laughs> Bruce Forsyth, play your cards right gag of the uh, of the afternoon out of the way. OK, so the last one is multifamily households. And what do we mean by multifamily households? So this is where there is more than one family unit living in the same household. What proportion of this for the whole of the UK? Do we think it's higher or lower than 23 0.9 percent um now we might need to be just think a bit about the categorization here what do we because what we mean by families might be slightly different from the office for national statistics um so the office office for national statistics statistics i'll get it out eventually um are really looking at families in terms of like a family unit so the multifamily households could include people who are related to each other in some cases so it might be it could be families choosing to live together who aren't related, but it might be people who are related to each other. So we've got a number of ideas here. We've got lower, higher, higher because of different religions and cultures. That's an interesting, a lot lower, higher, 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 a lot lower. Um, those who are saying lower, what are your reasons for lower? Got about half and half higher and lower. Can I, can we see a couple of reasons for lower? Higher due to cultural values and diversity, higher higher lower um so we're getting a getting a nice mix would like to see a couple of reasons for lower before we this is for the uk as a whole yes not just for london so yes it might well be that some of the reasons people are given because of cultural diversity etc it might be higher in london but if we take the uk as a whole um fictive kin that's a good one what was that sorry Fictive because of fictive yeah, kin. Fictive kin. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not including your dogs. No, we're not including your dogs. No, I don't include that. And the likelihood thing for multifamily for households is things like, um, sort of like if a young couple moved in with one of um, the parents yeah. and that things like of, that. That kind of arrangement. Lower due to a decline in families living together and families becoming smaller. Yes, yeah, some of the things that people had earlier about geographical mobility and things like that could well be mm. nuclear family is still the norm so lower interesting current attitudes to independence so lower shall we have a look yeah it is actually quite a lot lower um it's 1.1 percent but over the last couple of decades it has been the fastest growing household type in the uk so although that mm -hmm. sounds very low very low 1.1 percent it is actually quite a fast growing household type couple of reasons for that i mean some of the reasons that people gave earlier about the cost of property um and that that is a major factor because obviously people can reduce the cost of um of accommodation by choosing to move in together perhaps with elderly relatives um mm -hmm. you know perhaps living with 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 the younger parts of the family etc and things like that okay so it is it is it is lower but it is quite a quite a strongly increasing household type first for many of the reasons that you gave in the chat window and i'm really impressed by some excellent answers there these statistics incidentally came from the most recent um office for national statistics um release on families so i think it, i think it's actually 2019 so they might be due a, they might be due a, it was it was the it was the, the one we did we used in our video for yeah. um, on different family have family and diversity if you actually go onto the tutor to you um families and households revision videos you'll actually see a lot of this data as well yeah okay i'm really impressed with loads of great answers it's nice to see you know go beyond the kind of knowledge recall and apply some of that knowledge over the last couple of activities that's brilliant what we'd love you to do now is if you've enjoyed the video and if you found it useful can you click like and click subscribe so you get notified about future ones of these. Um, although I'm sure you'll all be having a nice break over half term, we are not breaking for half term. We will be back here, um, same time, same place uh, next Wednesday. 
Um, oh, Jenny, mm-hmm. so Revision Plus is the highlight of your week. I'm very pleased, <laughs> even if <laughs> even if there's a certain degree of sarcasm there. I'm going to pretend there isn't. I, I, that's lovely. We are um, so, <laughs> 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 that, that is true, yes. Um, so we, uh, yes, yeah, so next week, while you're having half term, we are doing um, theory and perspectives. Um, it's theory and perspectives open to year 12s and 13 so it's not the kind of uh we will be looking at later the kind of theory and debates from year 13 the kind of sociology as a science and things like that but it's more your perspectives your marxism functionalism feminism etc and it would be lovely uh for as many of you as possible to join us and yes you can watch this later on the channel and uh have a great rest of your afternoon and see you soon bye -bye. and after half time we are crime and deviants we are that's correct Mm. okay Cheers. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, all of you. Bye. Bye.